This is Jamie at Go Power Sports. This is the Hurricane 200 Pro. This is the 200 Pro. This has electric start. Got your thumb switch up here, which is different from the 200X that does not have electric start. Got a headlight switch here with low beam and high beam. You've got an LED tail light that works as a running light when the bike is on and a brake light. The main difference, other than the electric start, the headlight and the tail light, is the 50 chain. You get everything that the Hurricane 200X has with an upgraded headlight, brake light, electric start, front and rear brakes, and suspension. This is how your Hurricane Pro 200X will arrive. So uh, go ahead and uh, to take the frame apart. Yeah, need a half, half inch. You don't necessarily need a wrench. It comes off pretty easy. These, this 10 mil bolts to the rear of the frame. Most of the time they're hand tight, sometimes they're not. It's like Christmas. So everything's mostly assembled. The only thing you're gonna need to do is your handlebars, your front wheel, front brake, and maybe do some minor adjustments and your battery install. And take your front axle out, which can be a two-person job at times. Now the fun part of lifting it up onto the stand, which you may need a frame to help. So the first thing I like to do is get the handlebars mounted and out of the way. Yeah, everything's pre-pressurized and wired. Nothing that you need to do, which makes this the perfect bike if you don't want to do a giant mini bike puzzle. All your hardware is going to be in the bag with the fender too. This is your front wheel, fender, the hardware, and a battery. So the battery is going to power your headlight, your tail light and brake light, and your electric start. And it does charge while you're riding it. Yeah, they'll be zip tied down. Just bring them up, make sure your cables don't get tied up in anything. Line them up with these grooves so they have something to grip in. Get the top of your riser. Set it in there. Snug those down by hand so you don't strip them out when you run them in there. And you're gonna need your 10 mil again. It didn't go missing in the time I set it down, so that's good. A 10 mil always walks off on you. Make sure you don't over tighten these because they will crack if you do. Make sure they're tightened evenly as well. So we can go over here to this side. Take this three bolts off. The 10 mil is your friend during this whole process. And this is your battery tray. You're gonna have a bracket. You're gonna wanna make sure it actually hooks on there without hitting the frame. You may have to bend it down or up a little bit just to get it to clear. And this little tab back here where your battery strap goes on. Sometimes it doesn't clear the frame. Just get a wrench, adjustable wrench. Get it on there, tighten it down, and you can bend that bracket down. Give it a little test fit. Fits just fine. This is your battery hardware to mount the battery cables. These little blocks slide in under here. So you have something to thread into. This goes right in here, just like that, on both sides. If your positive is the shortest, you want your positive on this side. So, positive that side. You have to be careful because those little blocks will fall out and they are a pain to get back in. A nice and snug dam. All right, gonna need to take this front brake off the fork. 
and there's a little wedge in here, but you're not gonna be able to get that out with this wedge right here. This is something that everyone always misses. So pull that, pull that wedge out, and let it go. But you're gonna to wanna to keep this one in here while you're doing other stuff. The only reason I removed this is because of my brake switch. I don't wanna drain the battery while, it's, while I'm installing the battery. Once your battery is installed, you're going to need your battery cover. So maybe a bracket first. And then there should be another piece of this bracket. This goes on this side. And that is another 10 mil. You take your bolt, just like that. And then your side plate goes back on. And you're gonna wanna hand thread these in so you don't strip out the holes. And our battery is installed. Now I'm gonna go put air in that tire and I'm gonna mount that tire. Twenty-four PSI. Felt like twenty-two. All aired up. Alright, so now that our tire is aired up, we're gonna take the first easy step to install the fender before we install the tire so you can get it on there nice and easy. We have our front fender hardware and our front fender. First thing I do, I grab one for the back. Get it on there and then makes it a lot easier to get the front ones in. Now that we have our fender installed, we can install the front tire. So I'm OCD. I like my axles running the same way. So that axle is going in this way, nut is on that side. So I'm doing the same up front. Just get that hand tight so you can install your front caliper. That way if you run into any alignment issues, you can make the adjustment there. Now, this wedge that comes out very easy. <laughs> Caliper goes on just like that. And then you're gonna run your front brake hardware through there, which they're nice enough to supply you with a bag of front brake hardware. It's two bolts, lock washer first, flat washer second. Make sure your hole's lined up. Just two, just two to mount that. Make sure your brake hose isn't rubbing the front wheel or tire. It's 10 mil for top and bottom. And you can spin it. You wanna come over here and look at this? So Trailmaster is nice enough to let you know that there's no oil in here but it's hidden. There's a little tag inside that does state that there is no oil, which means you can pick your favorite oil. All right, so we installed our battery, our handlebars, our front fender, our front wheel, front brake, 
and we're good to go. If you like this video, like, follow, subscribe, gopowersports.com.